Next speaker, please. Longtime Escondido resident Guy Chandler faced a situation many San Diego families may be all too familiar with. He described it at a recent county supervisor's meeting. Probably the worst day of my life was uh, June 16th, 2015, when my daughter Janelle, 37 years old, came to me and said, Dad, sit down. I'm going to tell you something you're not going to like. I said, what's that, sweetheart? She said, we have to move out of San Diego County. Chandler's daughter told him she was planning to take her young family and move to another state because she couldn't find a house she could afford to raise her kids in San Diego. Next two days, a lot of hand-wringing and crying went on. Chandler says he now communicates with his grandchildren via FaceTime. What's my point? My point is droves of young families are leaving the state of California because they can't afford to live here. The housing situation in San Diego is being called a crisis for both buyers and renters. Stephen Russell heads the San Diego Housing Federation, which works to produce more affordable housing for renters, like this development at 22nd and Commercial, east of downtown. Since the year 2000, we've seen rents increase by about 32 percent while wages have, in, have actually decreased by 2% during that t same time frame. Russell says more than half of San Diego renters are paying more than a third of their income in rent. More than 70% of San Diegans are now priced out of the home ownership market for an average priced house. And yet San Diego's regional planning agency, the San Diego Association of Governments, or SANDAG, says there is the space, we have the capacity, to build enough housing to meet our needs. Here's the Director of Land Use and Transportation Planning, Charles Stoll. Our current forecast shows that the planned housing uh, that is contained within all the general plans for all of our local jurisdictions, all the cities and the unincorporated county, provide uh, enough housing to accommodate the projected need of about 325,000 units between now and the year 2050. Um, and uh, so the current general plans show uh, sufficient capacity to meet that. While the forecasts of our regional planners tell us that there should be enough new housing being built in San Diego like this to meet the needs of our children, in practice, the gap between what we need and what is actually being built is getting wider and wider. According to Sandag, we need anywhere between 11 to 12,000 units annually just to keep pace with population growth. Matt Adams of San Diego's Building Industry Association says that hasn't happened for 10 years since 2005, as this chart shows. Last year, the building industry did get permits for over 10,000 units. And that was the first time we've done it since, uh, what, way back here. And so I thought it would have gotten more attention, but uh, sadly it didn't. But Adams admits there's a catch to these improving numbers. Even though more of the permits, the ones in red, are for multifamily, not single-family homes, they are still not affordable. Out of the 10,000 that were produced last year, you had only 229 single-family homes were produced uh, that could be sold at $500,000 or less. The market that is not being met or serviced is the market of working middle-class families. Adams calls the housing market an hourglass market, with more houses being built for the people at the top and the bottom of the economic ladder than people in the middle. But Russell says it's more like a goblet with a big bowl and a tiny base. He says in the first seven years of building out Sandag's regional housing forecast, just over 20% of the housing needs for low-income earners was built, under 20% of housing for middle-class families were built, while for the above-average earners, 152% of what was needed got built. The goblet, I mean, is nice because you think of a goblet spilling over with supply. And for the top third, there is a plethora of choices. For folks below the top third, there really are not choices. Russell says part of the problem is that though the state requires cities to submit plans for warehouses can be built, there are very few incentives to actually build them. It would be helpful if municipalities actually built according to their community plans and actually met the expectations that they put out in their own local housing elements. Uh, if they were to do that, then we could in fact meet uh, the demand, uh, the local demand for housing. Adams agrees, saying there are no penalties and few incentives for cities to follow through on their state-mandated housing plans. It's a paperwork exercise right now. Sandag awards between five and eight million dollars every few years to cities that do a particularly good job of building sustainable, affordable houses near transit lines, like this one in Vista. But Stahl says the regional planning agency has no authority to enforce local land use plans that call for higher density. Each jurisdiction's 
responsible for pulling their own weight. That's the way it's always been. Russell thinks as San Diego's housing crisis deepens, Sandag should step up and take more of a leadership role. We have had some constructive conversations, but I don't think that the magnitude of the housing crisis we're in has really permeated to the minds of all of those board members. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, I think, to get the level of focus and attention and commitment from Sandag that the issue really deserves. Allison St. John, KPBS News.